When writing games, users often make the mistake of focusing on graphics first, such as explosions, animations, jumping effects, shaders, 3D and more. This is, of course, completely new to any game player. Um, for what is a game to a game player but a series of visually interactive stimuli? But as game developers, we need to learn to think a little bit differently. To game developers, games are more than just graphics. Graphics may be the end result, but the backbone of any game, no matter how big or small, is the way in which it handles its own data. Uh, managing and creating data resources for your program to uh, address, update and reference is the difference between a graphical demo um, and a working interactive game. So in this section of the tutorial, we're going to be focusing on our data assets. And we're going to begin the process by removing the code. And we're going to create a series of types. So I'm just going to reference them over here. And we're going to type in type underscore mole. And we always end a type with end type. And we're going to type in SPR, which is short for sprite, as integer and SPD as float, time as float, uh, flag as integer, and S, small s and big Y as float. And that's basically it for setting up a type. Now what we're going to do is assign it to another identifier using the as in the same way we do here. As you can see, we're basically saying that SPR is an integer, SPD um, is a float, etc, etc. And by creating a type like this, we can assign it to additional identifiers and then apply these data sets to each of those identifiers. Now, if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, then you can read all about types in chapter 3.2.3 .3 of my ebook, Teach Yourself Game Programming for Android and Windows. If you don't know what an integer float um, or string is, then you really need to learn that because that, those are essential things in programming. I mean, very basically, an integer is a whole number. So it can be 0, 1, 5, 4, 5, 10 hundred etc this will be an integer um, a float would be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 and a string would be anything between quotes and that can be numbers and it can be letters um, or it can be uh, print my name is Daniel etc uh, and that will basically print everything between those quotes um, well actually this won't print it but if I put print here then it will. So anyone, uh, anything between those quotes will basically be printed on screen. Now that's a very light overview of them uh, and there are some more specifics. Um, if you want to read more about them then you can do so in the AGK documentation or you can do it with my free ebook which is the one you can download if you've already purchased App Game Kit. So once that's been done we're then going to create a set of a global um, identifiers. So we're going to type in global and game mode global score, uh, global lives, global high score, uh, global uh, level background, global level foreground. Now the reason I'm globalizing uh, level foreground and level background is because I'm going to be turning them off and on within a function and uh, global allows me to uh, basically pass data into a function directly. Um, game mode will basically set whether or not the game is um, running as a menu or whether it's actually running the game itself. Score should be fairly self-explanatory as lives and um, high score is. Now um, you'll notice that I haven't put as integer or as float or anything like that. When I do this then it defaults as an integer. So everything here is a whole number value. Um, you can learn more about uh, symbolic identifiers again within my um, free version of the ebook. Next we're going to create a set of arrays. So if I type in here, dim mole images and 10, and this will basically load the sequence of images that makes up the whole animation. Um, then dim uh, moles, which of course will be the moles we're animating um, in, in a grid. And we're actually going to set this one up as mole. 
and dim text and we're going to have four lines of well five lines of text and I'll explain that in a moment and dim overlay and that's going to have uh, another four layers right um, whenever you create um, an array uh, it always starts at zero so zero is counted as a slot so I have nine moles um, the count will start at zero therefore it will be zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and that's actually ten there so I have to go back one uh, therefore we, we uh, define it as eight instead of ten so that's eight uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just like that. So it's always a good idea to remember that uh, any array you start would always start with an index of zero. Now, an index is a way of uh, sorry, um, an array is a way of uh, creating a simple, a single identifier, attaching an index value to it, and then organizing multiple forms of data. So in addition to the existing moles, so we've got moles here. Now if I want to reference the first mole, and I want to give it um, a sprite ID, then I would reference it like that. Because it's been assigned as a type, um, it gets these types uh, placed on the, or tacked onto the end of it with a dot. So if I was to type in uh, equals one, um, then basically every time I call uh, moles uh, zero dot SPR, then I would get the value one back. Um, and I can perform mathematical functions and all sorts of things on this. Now again, I'm assuming you know how arrays work. If you don't, then you'll need my full version of the book, which is Teach Yourself, um, Dark Basic Professional, blah, blah, blah. You know about that by now. And you can look within the index to find out about it. Um, or again, you can use the AGK files to find out about it yourself. I'm not telling you simply because it will keep the pace of this um, tutorial fairly high. So that's it for our data set. Before we continue, however, what we're going to do is uh, compile the program. So um, compile, run and broadcast. And that's what should happen. Um, now you will get a Windows security alert. This is basically um, because it, it does require um, access to the internet and your local network. Um, now this is because it's being broadcast to the AGK player in theory. So if you just click in uh, on uh, allow access, um, then uh, if you want to test it on your device, you can. Now that's all that should happen really, is, is that you just um, compile the program, um, you get a little blank screen and then it vanishes. That basically means the program is working. If I was to do something like take away the E from mole and compile it then, then you get an error like that. Um, if I was to mistype um, SPR and then compile it, then I should, oh no I actually got no error message there, that's because I'm not addressing it directly, it's just created those. So you need to um, um, be careful um, when typing these in because you won't get any kind of error message. Well you have to be careful when typing it all in really. Um, I've probably picked the only part of the program that I could actually break at this point. So make sure that the code is typed in correctly. If you don't have your data set up um, now, then when you, when you come to type in everything later, then you could well be in for some very serious problems.